Now, in conclusion, in the last chapter of my book, Atlantis, I talk about the fact that here we are at a state where the Nephilim agenda, the Atlantean agenda of getting the technology back and also trying to solve this problem of the Stargate are coming into their latter days. The solution, the final solution is at hand. And in the book I mentioned that there are four possible outcomes, four possible conclusion scenarios. You know, there's a reason why the oligarchs love pyramids. And if you stand in front of a pyramid, you'll notice that it's a triangle in front of you. But, of course, a pyramid is made of four phases, four triangles. The swastika is a fourfold device. The Knights of Malta Cross, which is nothing but a pyramid seen from above, by the way. But the Knights of Malta Cross is also fourfold. There seems to be a penchant in secret societies for fourfold symbolism. And perhaps there's a reason. So taking that motif, taking that paradigm, I thought that there were four outcome scenarios that might be played out in the next generation or even less, next decade or so. Briefly speaking, I call these four outcomes, number one, the burn and rise no more outcome. Number two is the bridges to Babylon outcome. Uh, number three in the book, it says start the fuse tector. And number four is the empire strikes back scenario. More specifically, outcome one, the progeny of Atlantis succeed in regaining all their technological hardware, especially that for breaking through the Stargate, and prepare for departure. In so doing, they come out into the open more than ever, startling the human race, who cannot comprehend what is happening. When they are out of range, they destroy our planet and all that lives on it. Does that seem far-fetched? Well, let's think. Does any criminal like to leave footprints and fingerprints behind? The individuals who came here and got interned on our planet have absolutely no love for us. And even though we're talking about the descendants of the Atlanteans, they have enough alien blood as their treatment of the planet, their treatment of womankind, their treatment of children, their treatment of animals should show you exactly who these people are and what they believe. So criminals do not like to leave traces behind if they can prevent it. So let's just bear that in mind. Outcome two, the bridges to Babylon. The masters realize that no matter what they do, they cannot vacate the earth and that they are forever chained to the pit. In this case, they rule the world with unmitigated tyranny, relentlessly and openly. The human race loses whatever privileges, quote unquote, it enjoyed while its utility was beneficial. Now it is deprived and slaughtered. Debauchery is everywhere and people even turn upon themselves, sinking into chaos of unimaginable proportions, with all the dark, repressed content of consciousness in full view, without the restraint of inner or outer authority. We see many movies from Judge Dredd to uh, Blade Runner to uh, all sorts of movies showing the debauchery, the coming chaos in the streets, uh, from They Live to Life Force, lots of movies uh, contemplating this particular type of scenario where law and order goes out the door and all that is repressed within us, all the years of frustration and hatred you know, that's encoded in us, we, the human race just goes crazy with cudgels in the street type of scenario. Number three, the good, quote unquote, under the weight of the yoke, finally rise against their oppressors, actively preventing them from ever leaving and taking their evil elsewhere. However, to do this, we destroy, that is, sacrifice ourselves, taking them with us. And uh, I'm thinking of uh, Start the Fuse Tector from the Sam Peckinpah movie, you know, The Wild Bunch. I mean, this is kind of heroics that probably would uh, very much impress Sam Peckinpah. Naturally, it's something we would not normally want to choose because it would mean that the earth would just become a revolving headstone. You solve your problem, though. But it's not the best option. However, this kind of scenario almost has taken place several times in history before. In Celtic mythology, if you read in detail the stories of the Tafidi Danan and how they had to combat these forces with sword in hand, by the way, they weren't doing it today with microphones, cameras, placards and speeches and books. They actually did it on the field of battle right in front of these individuals. The movie Highlander comes to mind, which in a fictional way shows this particular kind of conflict taking place between the giants 
and the heroes. Now the fourth uh, outcome or scenario, which I entitled The Empire Strikes Back, we find that mankind finally discovers the correct means to the end and vanquishes its enemy with no excessive loss of life or homeworld. We eradicate the enemy and finally resolve the problem of evil. The beasts are slain, the damsels rescued, and the ending happy. Now, up until now, even the vast majority, even with the vast majority of their sophisticated technical hardware again in their possession, the progeny of the Atlanteans are not able to break out of their quarantine, out of their internment on the silent planet. In the book Against Civilization, we read, the combined military expenditures of all the world's governments in 1987 were so large that all of the social programs of the United Nations could be financed for 300 years. This one caption, this one statement, basically tells us the whole gig. In one year, just 1987, we have this vast expenditure on what? Technology and military. But yet every program of the United Nations, they're all screaming for money and let's heal the world, but we can't get round to it. We just don't know how we can crack it. I don't know how backwards you have to be to not see what the problem is, what the agenda is. 